Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 14. Paul Bunyan's Farm, Part 1. All during these later years of his lumbering, Paul Bunyan had owned a fine farm about which many interesting tales are told. Here it was that his family stayed while he was in the woods. Here it was also that the great logger spent most of his time every year after the spring drive was over and up until it was time to get into the woods again in the fall. Here, during the summer, he would reward Babe, Bessie, and his other animals by turning them out in his rich pastures. Paul amused himself occasionally by conducting various experiments with growing things. Once, he tried raising macaroni, planting nearly his whole farm in macaroni, but there must have been something wrong with his seed. When his macaroni came up, it kept on growing and growing until half of just one stalk would have fed a section gang for a week. Finally, it stopped growing and ripened off to the prettiest, creamy macaroni color anyone ever saw. But that didn't cheer Paul up any, for he thought he was going to lose a lot of money on his macaroni because of it being so big. Johnny Inkslinger saved him from that, however. Johnny wrote to all the big factories back east and kept after them until he sold every one of them a stock of Paul's macaroni for a smokestack. In addition to the great logger's pet animals, which have been mentioned before, he had another one which he kept on the farm and never used in any of his logging work. This was the Roan Colt. Paul had high hopes at first of making a racehorse out of the colt and in order to give him the proper training, he built a big racetrack on his farm. This track was only five miles around, as Paul thought that was enough distance to start with. But the colt was able to run it only two days. When he first started out, he ran so fast that he kicked dirt back in his own face, and before two days were up, he had worn the track down to such a depth that water was running into it in great streams. After that, Paul had to use his racetrack for a duck pond, and he had to give up all his racing ambition for the Roan Colt, for fear the animal would likewise ruin every other track he might run on. Paul's daughter, however, made good use of the ruined racetrack. Teeny, as she was named, had charge of all the poultry around the farm, and she was so smart about her work that she made quite a bit of money from it. Her daddy gave her the racetrack for a duck pond, and her flock of ducks was the finest that could be found anywhere. At first, the ducks laid eggs of just ordinary duck egg size, but Teeny fooled them into doing much better than that. She got Ollie to help her, and together they chipped out a big stone in the shape of an enormous big egg so perfect that it would have fooled anyone, even a duck. The only flaw about it was that the stone wasn't quite as big as the egg started out to be, so that the ends were flat on account of not having enough stone to round them off. Teeny was a little worried at first for fear that this defect might keep her plan from working, but later it proved of great advantage. When this big egg was put into the duck house where all could see it, it certainly aroused a lot of excitement. The ducks quacked the matter over and over among themselves until finally they began to get quite jealous of any duck that could lay an egg like that. 
their duck pride would not allow them to be outdone in a matter of that kind, and so before very long they were all laying real eggs just a little bit bigger than the imitation one. They even copied the flat ends, which was a good thing, for otherwise one of those eggs could have never been taken through any doorway. Paul always admired big things, and he gave Teeny a lot of praise for her success with her ducks. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.